We're asked to find the mass, the moment about the x-axis, the moment about the y-axis, as well as x-bar and y-bar, which would be the center of mass of the lamina, bounded by y equals negative x plus three, y equals x divided by two, and x equals zero. I've already graphed the bounded region below. Let's call this region R. The density function is rho of x comma y equals three times the quantity x plus y, which we will use in the form of three x plus three y. Let's begin by determining the mass. The mass is equal to the double integral over the region R of the density function, differential A. Let's first decide on the order of integration, or whether we should let differential A be equal to dy dx or dx dy. So looking at the bounded region R, Notice it's bounded below by one line and above by one line, but if we look at the region from left to right, it's bounded on the left by one line, but on the right it's bounded by two different lines, and therefore it's going to be easier to integrate with respect to y first and then x. So we'll let differential a be equal to dy dx. So the mass m is equal to the double integral of the density function in the form of three x plus three y dy dx, and that's determine the limits of integration. Starting with y, again the region is bounded below by y equals x divided by two, and above by negative x plus three. The lower limit of integration for y is x divided by two. The upper limit is negative x plus three. Now to find the limits of integration for x, we do have to find the point of intersection here on the right, which I already found, it's the point two one. The limits of integration for x are from x equals zero to x equals two. And now we integrate this back to a y, treating x as a constant. The antiderivative is three xy plus three times y squared divided by two, or three halves y squared. Now we need to find big F of negative x plus three minus big F of x divided by two by performing substitution for y. So here's where the algebra will get a little messy. Big F of negative x plus three is equal to three x times the quantity negative x plus three plus three halves times the square of negative x plus three. And then we have minus big F of x divided by two, which is three x times x divided by two plus three halves times the square of x divided by two. And now we need to do a bunch of simplifying. Let's do some work here on the side. Distributing three x, we have negative three x squared plus nine x. Then we have plus three halves times the square of negative x plus three well, the square of negative x plus three is x squared minus six x plus nine. We'll come back to this, and then we have minus the quantity three x times x divided by two, which is three halves x squared. And then we have plus three halves times the square of x divided by two, which gives us three eighths x squared. So let's go back to our integral. We have the integral from zero to two of we have negative three x squared plus nine x. Let's distribute three halves now. We have plus three halves x squared. Three halves times negative six is negative nine, giving us minus nine x. And then we have plus three halves times nine, which is plus 27 halves. And then we have minus, in the parentheses here, we have three halves x squared plus three eighths x squared. Three halves x squared is equivalent to 12 eighths x squared. 12 eighths x squared plus three eighths x squared is 15 eighths x squared. And again, we are subtracting. And now let's simplify again by combining like terms. Notice we have nine x minus nine x. Looking at the x squared terms, we have negative three x squared plus three halves x squared minus 15 eighths x squared, which simplifies to negative 27 eighths x squared. And then we still have plus 27 halves. 
And now we integrate with respect to x, the antiderivative is going to be negative 27 eighths times x cubed divided by three, which is negative 27 24ths x cubed, and then we have plus 27 halves x. And now we need to find big F of two minus big F of zero. Substituting two for x, we have negative 27 24ths times the cube of two plus 27 halves times two. And big F of zero is equal to zero. Simplifying, we have 18. So now we know the mass of the lamina is 18. The next step is to determine the moment about the y-axis, the moment about the x-axis, and then we can determine the center of mass by determining x-bar, which is the moment about the y-axis divided by the mass, and y-bar is equal to the moment about the x-axis divided by the mass. Let's go and set up the double integrals for the moment about the y-axis and the moment about the x-axis. So I've already set this up. Notice how for the moment about the y-axis we have an integrand function of x times a density function, which gives us x times the quantity three x plus three y. Distributing, we have three x squared plus three xy. The order of integration is the same, as well as the limits of integration. Working all this out, the moment about the y-axis is equal to 13.5, and then for the moment about the x-axis, the integrand function is y times a density function, which gives us an integrand function of three xy plus three y squared. We go through the same process again with the same order of integration as well as the limits of integration. The moment about the x-axis is equal to 27. So now that we have the mass and the moment about the y-axis and moment about the x-axis, we can determine the center of mass given by x-bar comma y-bar. The x-coordinate of the center of mass is 13.5 divided by 18, which is 0.75 and the y-coordinate of the center of mass is 27 divided by 18, which is 1.5. If we go back to the bounded region R, the point 0 0.75, 1.5 is approximately here. Which is the center of mass. I hope you found this helpful.